just give it some time it's still starting welcome to another session where we do the last bit of the try exam paper okay We, we were busy with confidence intervals when the, we stopped the session yesterday. So we continuing. So we already did two questions from confidence intervals. So let's look at this second question. The average cost per night of a hotel in Port Elizabeth Township is 273. Assume this estimate is based on the sample of 45 and that the sample standard deviation is 65. For a 95% confidence interval, what is the critical value? What is it that they have given us? Let's unpack this question so that it helps us to find where are we going to find the critical value. So let's make it bigger. Okay, so what is it that they gave us? Hmm? They gave us the average. The average, which is the mean, which is 273, but we don't need that. What else did they give us? The sample size, right? Of 45. Did they give us sigma or did they give us S? They gave us. Pardon? They gave us S. They gave us S of 65. And we need to find the confidence interval or the critical value. And they gave us the confidence interval, 1 minus alpha of 0 0.95. Therefore, it means they have given us alpha of 0 0.05. So where do we find the critical value if the population standard deviation is not given or no? We find it on the T. So we'll find it by using T alpha and the degrees of freedom, which is N minus one. So our T alpha is 0, 0,05 divided by two and the degrees of freedom so N is 45 minus one. It will be T of what is 0, 0,05 divided by 2 it will be 0, 0,025, right? 0, and uh, 45 minus 1 is 44. So we need to go find the critical value on the T table. So let's scroll to the T table. And this is our T table. Now, remember, on the T table, we do not use the top part, right? All these values at the top, we don't use. We use the upper tail area and the values of the upper tail area closer to the data values. So our degrees of freedom is 45. And we're looking for 0, 0,025. So it is 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 3, 4, the one in column four, if we come from the right or from the left, if we come from the right, it will be number four. So 45 is here, one, two, three, four. That will be. I think it's 44, not 45. Ah, yes, you are right, it's 44. It's 44, at least you are awake. <laughs> 
the answer is 2.0154. Let's see. The answer is 2.0154. So the answer will be question number or option number B. And double check so that we don't make a mistake. 2.0154. 2.0154. If I chose the wrong one, I would have chosen this because I went to 45. Let's see. It's correct. Are there questions before we move? Because remember, if I move, I can't come back. No questions. Okay, so we move on. Now we're moving on to hypothesis testing. In testing the hypothesis, the null hypothesis says the population mean is equals to 15 and the alternative says the population mean is not equals to 15. So you should already hear, tell yourself, what is it that we're doing? Is it the one tail test or a two tail test? It's very important to define it based on the hypothesis testing statement. The following information was given. So we are also given some information. Population standard deviation is five. The sample mean is 18.1 and the sample size is 10. The level of significance is 0 0.03. Suppose that the test statistic calculated is 1.96. What will be the p-value? So they gave you so much information that they want to confuse you. Don't get confused. Let's look at that. Let's dissect that. So the first thing we can look at is the hypothesis test First uh, test statement. We are doing a two tail two tail test. That is what they told us be based on the sign on the alternative hypothesis. Right. The question is asking us we need to find the p value. Right. In order for us to find the p value, we need to find the z test statistic. They told you that the test statistic is 1.96. 1.96. Now, what you need to remember with two tail test, ignore what the level of significance is and the sample size. The thing that is important is that they told you that you're doing, uh, they gave you the population standard deviation, therefore it means this is a z-test because we can only go and find the p-value on the z-table. Now, there are a couple of things you need to remember. If your z-test is positive, let's not make it positive there. If the answer of your z-test is positive and you're doing a two-tailed test, then your p-value will be equals to two times one minus the table value. That is one thing that you need to remember. If your z-value is negative, then your p-value will be equals to two times the table value. If you don't want to use this type of the scenario, maybe I should just scroll it to the side. If you don't want to use this type of a scenario, you can say, or oh, let's change the pen. I like red. Let's use the other color, which I don't think you can even see when I write, but you can say it is two times 
uh, not three times. You will say one minus the table value. Plus one minus the table value. Or if you want to use this scenario, you will say the table value plus the table value. That is one way of finding the p-value. So now let's go back to our question. Our z-test is positive, right? So it means we need to go to the z-table and we will go to the positive side of the z-table. Therefore, what are we going to do when we find our p-value? The first scenario, because our test statistic is positive. So let's go to the Z. It's positive. We're going to find our Z value of 1.9 and 6. And we're going to find the table value, which is that table value, right? Which is 0, 0,9750. back so in order for us to find the p-value we will say two times one minus zero comma nine seven five zero that's what we got right zero comma nine seven five zero what is your p-value I got 0 0.05. 0 0.05 will be your p value. Let's see if you are right. 0 0.05 is our p value. Are there any questions? Okay. Let me also explain for the last time this. For a two tail test, for a two-tailed test, this is the scenario. This is what you're going to find or how you're going to find your p-value. If your z-value of the z-test statistic, if it's positive, you're going to use p-value will be two times one minus the table value because the table value has bigger probabilities. If you're going to use the bigger probability and multiply it by two, you will get a probability of more than one. And we know that probabilities can never be bigger than one, right? And they can never be smaller than one. So you cannot have a negative probability or a probability of bigger than one. So if it's negative, negative, we have smaller probabilities. So we just add both of the two areas. That is for a two tail. If it's a one tail, this is the other thing that you need to remember. If it's a one tail and the sign says less than on your alternative, this one will say it's not equal in your alternative. We always are interested in the H1 value of the sign. So if you have a Z, a one tail where it is less than, to find the p-value, your p-value will just be the table value, right? That's easy. What about when it is, when it is one tail, but it is greater than? So in that instance, when it is greater than, then your p-value will be 1 minus the table value. Can you see that the same scenario that we use in the probabilities, it works also on the hypothesis. So you just need to remember all this. 
So whatever you have learned in the basic probabilities, oh, sorry, in the normal probabilities, you will learn to use the same concept when you do um, your hypothesis testing. So always remember that. Let's move on to the next question, unless there is a question. No question. Please don't say we want to when I'm done moving. <laughs> you want to ask a question. So let's go to question 20. Oh, at least the picture is there. And question 20. We need to make it bigger so that you can see. To test the hypothesis, the null hypothesis says the mean is equal to zero. And the alternative states that the, uh, the mean is greater than zero. So we already can tell from the hypothesis that we are doing a one tail test, right? Based on the alternative side. A statistics pra practitioner randomly sampled 100 observation and found that the mean is 106 which is x bar, and the standard deviation s. So this s already tells you what standard deviation is this. Is it the population or the sample? Sample. So if it's a sample, therefore it means we're going to be doing a, is it a z or a t test? A t. Hmm. It will be a T test. So some of this information, you just need to make sure that you understand what are they and what are they leading to, because they will help you answer some questions. Assume a significance level of 1%. Calculate the test statistic. So what they are asking you to do is to calculate the test statistic. Let's go back to our black pen. T stat is equals to your sample mean minus the population mean divided by your sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So you will need to have this formula written somewhere in your hypothesis testing where the population standard deviation is unknown. You will use this. Okay, so let's substitute the values. Our x bar which is the mean for the population or for the sample, sorry, it's 106. The population mean is given in a hypothesis statement, it's 100. Divide by your sample standard deviation of 35, divide by the square root of 100. So do the calculation. So do mine on the screen. You ever invented this calculator, the cash flow calculator? I respect that they saved a whole lot of lives. Okay, so what is your answer? Before I give you my answer. Um, I got number D, one Number D, which is one comma, I didn't get D. E. I got e. D. E. E. 1.7. Yes. So you need, in the exam as well, you need to pay at close attention to the numbers because all of them look exactly the same. Can you see? It's just the other one has four, the other one seven is before the decimal, this other one. The values are swapped around, which makes only E correct. So let's see if E is correct based on the answers. Okay. 
and B is our correct answer. We will move on to the next question. This is one of those. Now the the responses are all hidden. Yeah, that's what happened earlier to me when I did the attempt. Okay, let's fix that. I'm gonna have to close, stop sharing so that I can see what okay. is doing this. Just have to edit the question because I am not as a student today. I logged in as myself. Let's see. Why, 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 why? I understand because I can see them, yeah. And the worst part is I cannot say let's use them the way they are. Because they are randomized. So we'll end up choosing the wrong one. And I know which one is correct. Um, it is. It's not allowing. I bet. And I thought they were fixed. Okay, we will have to. Um, I did send the screenshot yesterday, right? Via via WhatsApp, or was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? I think we can use those screenshots because I'm not winning. Yo, got too much. Can he just please mute himself? So. I don't know, don't know, don't know why he's doing this. Still can't get it to work. Only the header is working. Even if I change the, the questions, I have two, two of them are working now, but not all of them. I'll open the, let me download the questions from 
values the pictures. Images for that. Now I can't find those screenshots. When did I send them? On Sunday. Yes, on Sunday. Yeah. They were sent on Saturday. I'll tell you what time now. Yeah. Yeah, what did was on Saturday? Yeah, it was around quarter past three. Yeah, found um, um, almost all of them. I'll just download them and then open them as pictures. You can find my phone if you'd like. I don't know if it'll work though. Yeah, it's just also other people might not be able to see it on on your and share on your screen. And it's fine. I've I have all of them now downloaded. Let's we can so let's let's go back there. Yeah, what did I do now? Navigate that thing you know because this will not work because only now only two shows and the rest don't I don't know why it's because of the pictures yeah so instead of I know which one is correct so we will we will choose the the right table based on the responses that we had. Uh, so let me open the questions. This is the question that we are dealing with. So it says, the trustees of a company pension plan has solicited opinions of the Sample company employees about the proposed revision of the plan. A breakdown of the responses is shown in the table below. We want to test if there is enough evidence to infer that the responses differ among the three groups of employees. And this is our Vegas. Which option provides the correct expected value? So remember expected value. I need to open this. The formula to calculate the expected value is your raw total multiplied by the column total divided by the grand total. Right? That is one one way of calculating. So you don't have to do the entire table. You can just do for one or for two of the values and then come and look at the the answers, the responses. What happened now? And look at the responses because the, you can see that the expected values are different for each and every one of them. Alternatively, you can go to the template and use the template, but you will need to understand which one is that. It's a three, it's a two by three uh, table, contingency table. So you will have to choose a three. Something is not working well on my thing. I can't 
get my yes there we go so we want a three by two contingency a two by three contingency table which is this table so if we complete the values on this table so we'll just remove those values and put there 67 even though it's not those widths i can change them as well blue color and white color and managers and this will be four and against then we can just add the values 32 and 11 63 and 18 and 9 and when i press outside and they are your expected values and then you can choose whichever one is correct so we can see the expected value that is correct is the table with 71.5 58.5 and the rest of the others are different. So op this option A on this question will be correct. So I will have to find time to do this manually now. Okay, so let's go back to our question. So since only the question with the option that is correct is visible, it makes it easy for us to choose which one. We know that that was the question, right? The response and and that is correct okay so you can use that you can use the template or alternatively you can come and calculate the contingency table right so the, it means you will have to calculate the total. So 67 plus 63 for blue color. Total. Times. If I'm calculating for. For four, so the total for. Four total. And the grand total. based on our table because I'm lazy, it's 130, 50, 20. So it's 130. So it's 130. And across the total is 1110. That's 1110 divided by the grand total is 200. Divide by 200. So if we take 130, multiply by 110 equals divide by 200, we get 71.5. They, I can just check all the answers. I can see that only in option A is 71.5 and that will be your correct answer and you move on that is in the exam don't try and go and answer all the other questions unless you have 71.5 twice then you move to the next one then you move to the next one but the sooner you get to the answer you move on okay so let's go to the next question i hope with this one it works And it also doesn't work. But we do have the question. So we'll put it up there. It is the Excel.
It's not this. It's not that. Just give me a second. I just need to find the screenshot of that one. It should be an Excel output. It means I didn't download all of them. Give me a second. Good. We go back to the platform to answer it, but we can use this screenshot okay so consider the following excel output testing for independence of two variables so they have calculated this is an excel output it has the rows number of two rows and three columns and they calculated the totals. Then they also went on and they calculated the chi-square test statistic, how much, how many degrees of freedoms are there, and the p-value and the critical value, right? So they've got all the values. All what you need to do is answer the question. So I'm just gonna make it bigger than what it is right now. I hope you are able to see. If not, we can revert back to the question on the actual. I bet things are not working the way I want them to to work. So we have the data. I hope you are able to see, even if it's small. So let's see if we can answer this question. So number A, it says, since 0 0.31, which is our test statistic, is less than our critical value, which is 5.992, then the null hypothesis of the independence cannot be rejected. So what, did that, what does that mean? So what we need is the rule. What is the rule? The rule says, if your chi squared step, if it's greater than, your chi square script, then you're going to reject your null hypothesis. That is the rule. That's one thing that we need to remember that. Remember your null hypothesis would state that they are independent. Let's put it in that way. Null hypothesis in the and your alternative will state that they are dependent. Okay. Number B, the observed frequency of row one and column three. So it means you go to row one, column three is the observed frequency 179. You need to check that. 
since the p value is 0, 0,845 is greater than 0, 0,05, the two variables are dependent. If we make decision based on the p value, the rule says that's another one that you need to take into consideration. The rule says if your p value is less than your alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. That is the rule that you need to take into consideration. And what what will be the decision? Are you going to reject the null hypothesis or not reject the null hypothesis? Number D, the degrees of freedom, we know that is the number of rows minus one times the number of column minus one, but they also gave you the answer there. So is it that? I don't know. Number E, the observed frequency of row one and column one is equals to, is it equals to 174? I don't know. Which one, what are we looking for? Is incorrect. We're looking for the incorrect statement. Do you know which one is incorrect? Come on, this thing is not making well right with me. I think option B. This option, option B. Um, it might be that this question was asking for the correct answer, but this is option B says row one, column three is 174. It says it's 179. So option B would be the incorrect. And it might be a surprise of our life if it's correct, because I think there is an error on this question. There is, a, there is an error on this question. This should say uh, the expected value. If I calculate, I think that is why it's it's correct. The, the incorrect answer will be between A and B, uh, A and C actually. So there is an error here with the typing of this. This should say, um, expected frequency, not observed. So let's calculate the expected frequency of that option. We will see that it will be 179. Oh, check with me. Don't do this to me. So the expected frequency of row one, column three will be 2000 times. It will be. 2000 times 358 divided by the total of 4000. So when we calculate that, what do we get? 2000 times 358 equals divide by 4,000. Okay. I think there is a typing error on my question there. I'll fix that. It should say expected value. That's correct. Now, the incorrect one is between uh, those two options. The incorrect one will be between... Let's try again. 
it will be between how we enter A or how we enter C. So let's go back to A and C. And C. can I bring back my rules? Okay, so let's look at the rules. So the first rule will apply to number one. It says, since our is the value, our test statistic is 0, 0,3 and it's less than 0, uh, 5,99. So if it's less than, then we do not reject the null hypothesis. Right, so that it means number A is correct. It says since uh, the test statistic is less than your critical value, the null hypothesis is not rejected. That is true because based on the rule, what does the rule say? It says if it's bigger, we were going to reject. So we not it's not bigger, so we're not rejecting the null hypothesis. So A is also correct. Let's look at C. C says the p value is greater than 0, 0,05 and therefore it means the two variables are dependent then it means we are rejecting the null hypothesis if they are dependent because we will say that the alternative is true but that is not the case because the rule says if the p value is less than alpha we're going to reject the null hypothesis and state that the two variables are dependent or they are not independent, right? They will are not independent or they are independent or they are dependent. So C is the incorrect one. I must apologize on this one question that we couldn't even see the answer. And it still says incorrect. That is the one that value that is incorrect. Uh, my bad. Then there is something wrong that I did with this question. But this is the incorrect option. Let me see what the incorrect option would have been on this question that we need to fix. It might be that we don't even have an incorrect question. Okay. So. Incorrect, 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 correct. The observed. This is incorrect, sorry, I bet. Incorrect, so that when you do your activity, then it can, it will be corrected. The other one, this is the incorrect one. I apologize on for that one. So that is the incorrect one. Let's save. Right. We can preview and see. Since my pictures are not showing, it's still fine. And I can check. So there we go. All right, and that is sorted. Moving on to the next one. I hope the picture. Oh gosh, the picture is also not showing. So this is the regression relation slope. And this is the question. This is not on. I really don't believe this. That is what is happening on these questions.
really don't know why it's not picking up because the picture is there. Okay, there is no other way that I can solve that problem. It's not allowing me to solve the problem. Let's use the picture to answer the question. Look at this. So, you can also use the template to answer the question. So, let's go ahead and use the template to save our time. So, the template is the regression template. So, we just going to change the values. There are only six of them. When you use this template, you need to pay attention to the instructions. So, you will need to highlight. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need to delete all these other rows. So you highlight from B the rows that you are not going to be needing up until you get to the X squared. At that point, you right click and you delete and you say up and they are all gone. The only values you need to substitute are those two values. I'm just going to remove the rest and complete the rest of the values. And then, and go ahead. So that will be four, two. I'll just enter the X values. Eight. And you need to pay attention to the uh, header. It's very important. 8, 11, 12, and 16. Going on to the next one is 22, 20, 19, 17, 16, and 13. If I had the time in the world, I would have captured this manually on the question papers. Because of my laziness, this happened. So once you have all this information, we need to answer all the questions because it's based on the regression. You just move to the right. And the blue area, that's where you will answer the questions. So we can start with. Um, we can start with the y-intercept, remember? If you don't know which one is the y-intercept, so let's also move this bigger. On the right side, they are all the information. There is your intercept. So you know that the intercept is on this line, 40, and you can, you can even minimize this so that you are able to see all of the values, right? So there is your intercept, and we're looking for the incorrect statement. So it says the intercept is 22.874, and we can see, or 879, see that that is that, and the slope, and you go to where the slope is, and this is for decimal. So you can also adjust your decimals. So they are the decimals. So if I adjusted my decimal, you will see that they align with the values I have in front of me. So 
we needed okay we choose them there we go this as well increase the decimal by one point then increase the column a little bit and when you do that because some of these things are just pictures we just go on top of the others okay so there is your number a is correct right based on the information we have A is correct. Then we move to B. B says A is strong negative linear relationship. You look for the R's and it will tell you whether is it a negative relationship or a positive relationship. And then C says the slope for the problem above implies that for every unit uh, increase, the score will decrease. So increase means positive, decrease means negative. So the sign in front of the slope for every additional unit, is it going to increase or is it going to decrease? That's how you will answer C. D, you need to verify whether this is the regression line and you can use the regression line equation here to validate if this is the same as what you have. Pay attention. Remember, the slope multiply with the x, the intercept is a constant, it stays on its own. If you look at this equation, does it reflect that? But you can also look at this equation and see if it's the same. Number E, the sample correlation coefficient is equals to negative 0.93. That's, is it equals to negative 0.93? That is R. So let's go to our question. Okay. What do you? You. It's the same, the same questions, even though they are moved around. So I'll bring in, bring in that Excel sheet so that you can tell me which one is correct. So A, B, C, D, E, which one is incorrect? I think D is incorrect. The regression line is the one that is incorrect because it should say 22.87 minus 0.57x. And you can see that they swapped around the intercept end. And the regression line together. And the last question of the day so it's not wiki i'll just bring the the equation the question so the question says an estimation of the relationship between annual bonus y in thousands of rent and the years of experience produced the following regression equation and they gave you the regression equation. So here you don't need the template. There is no way that you can answer this question with a template. They also give you the coefficient of determination of 0, 0,49, which is your R squared. And they say the objective of um, is to estimate the annual bonus of a person with five years of experience. So it means where you see X, you're going to put five and calculate what is your estimated bonus. And then you can also answer all the questions that they are asking. So with option number one, all what they want you to do is because they gave you 
coefficient of determination r squared, which is 0 0,49. How do we find r? It's just the square root of 0 0,49. That's to answer question number one. Question number two. And also bear in mind that your r in terms of r squared will not you will never see the side you need to look at the slope of the equation to recognize whether the sign it should be negative or positive because the answer here will always be positive from r squared to r will be positive but you need to look at the slope sign to tell you whether is it going to be a negative r or a negative a positive r for number B, they're asking you to interpret the slope. So for every one additional unit of experience, the annual bonus will, is it going to increase or decrease? Remember, plus means increase on the slope and minus means decrease. So if we add one more, does it increase the annual bonus or does it decrease? That's number C, uh, sorry, B. Number C, there is a positive correlation coefficient between the annual bonus that you will determine also the same with the slope. Is it positive or negative? That is another one. Number D, the minimum expected bonus will be 933 regardless of the number of years. So what they are saying is, remember your annual bonus is in thousands, it's a thousand of rents. So if this is zero, regardless of whether the number of years, so if this is zero, what will be the average bonus that a person will get every year? So you will need and then the, the answer there you will multiply by a thousand and that should give you what you are looking for there number e the predicted annual bonus of a person for five years experience will be eleven thousand five hundred and four so you need to take um, the value of five, substitute it into this and solve this to answer number E. So which one is incorrect? I'll just give you a couple of minutes to do some of this calculation. Remember G is where X is equals to zero. That is the value of your Y hat. Multiplied by a thousand, right? It should answer that one. For E, you will use where X is equal to five. What is the value of your Y hat? Multiply by a thousand. So it means from the equation that they gave you, you just multiply that. So I've given you all the information you need. So we can go back to, I can't go back to my question if I don't, write the equation here yeah. let me write the equation y hat is equals to 0 0.9333333 X so that you are able to choose the correct answer there. Use our
Are we winning? Do we know which one? Remember for A, you need to tell whether is that an increase or a decrease? Is that correct or incorrect? And we're looking for the in. What are we looking for? We're looking for the incorrect question or answer. Is it B? Considering the correlation coefficient has to be positive because the slope's positive. Is it B? Yes, because it says it's negative 0, 0,70. And if you take the square root of the square root of 0 0.49, it gives you 70%. But because the slope is positive, therefore it means this value as well is positive. So B is the incorrect one. But do you understand what is required of you to answer some of these questions in the exam? You just need to apply your mind. And at some point, you will also need to make some calculations as well. And that concludes our session for today because 25 is, is just a general question. But I just asked because I was lazy now to find more questions as well. Um, and my UNISA, maybe probably um, around this time of the day, UNISA runs some updates, hence their system is so slow. So the last question is actually just a general question, just to see. So, check if you guys understand um, and if you guys are happy it has nothing to do with statistics all right well, and that concludes our engagement otherwise there is no other thing that i need to to discuss any further with anyone Unless if you have any question, um, I just want to see what the question was all about, but it's taking forever. Right? Oh, they, it just says, thank you for being a dedicated student and participating in all the activities that helps you prepare. It clearly shows that you are taking your studies seriously. I wish you all the best with your exam. Remember, you can retake these activities as many times as possible you, until you feel that you understand most of the content. As your number one cheerleader and supporter, oh, I forgot to write there, supporter, I'm very proud of you and I know you can do it. And my last question of the year until I see you again next year, if you are still doing that. True or false, did I meet your expectation to sub for the support I provided for this module? Are you happy? Are you satisfied? And that was the last question of the year that I have for you. And there is nothing more, nothing less that I can add. I think even my voice is very exhausted from me talking since from April, March, April until now. <laughs> I need some rest. Thank you guys. And thank you for being spot, for being here and for always participating. And there's nothing more. I'm done. Thank you very much for your no time. Problem. No Thanks, problem. Lizzie. Thank, thank you so you much, Lizzie. Lizzie. Thank you so Lizzie. much. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. You are all welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Cheers, man.